students in the future. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, I was just reading a quote from uh, the release for ISCOM Investments, the new consortium in the coast of BC of Indigenous companies. And I was reading a quote from Wamish Ken Watts. He's the elected chief counselor of Sashat Nation. He says, uh, as First Nations decision makers and leaders, it is our responsibility to help find positive and productive solutions and be proactive in our efforts to solve the complex problems that society faces. And I want to thank my colleague, such as she's done tonight. And also, he cited, through the shared values of our consortium, it is our goal to demonstrate how businesses can work with First Nations and facilitate this change with new ways of thinking. Our nations have made a commitment to bring our paddles into the same canoe, together paddling as one as we move forward to exploratory opportunities. And Madam Speaker, what I'd really like us to learn from Chief uh, Watts from Wamish is can we do that here? Can we get ourselves in the same canoe and start paddling in the same direction? Because 42 years of going back and forth like this, it's not working, Madam Speaker. It's, it's, it's failing uh, everybody. And, you know, the government could invest uh, or expand the Natural Resource Canada program, which really helped Indigenous communities. But maybe my colleague could speak about the importance of Indigenous ownership when it comes to forestry uh, companies in, in Canada and, and Indigenous knowledge and the importance of that. And uh, I want to thank my colleague for her speech and for tonight trying to force that debate and open up talking about solutions to deal with these problems that are facing us right now. <clears throat> Member for San Diego Gulf Islands. Thank you, Madam Speaker, and thanks to my friend from Courtney, Columbia. Look, the, the issue of forestry and between the Canada-US debate is structural. Let's recognize that. Most of our forests and forest products are produced off land that is called crown land. And in the US, it's on private land. And the stumpage fees we charge are viewed by the US as being an unfair subsidy. Let's strip all that away. It's indigenous land. We want to call it private land? Where did you, who did you steal it from? If you want to call it crown land, where did we stake it from? What if we focus our efforts around forests on justice and reconciliation and land back and economic value and thinking to the seven generations around projects like the one that my friend from Courtney Alberni just mentioned and Chief Watts' impact there. We also need to, to re-examine our Constitution because it's widely assumed that because in 1867 someone wrote down that provinces are in charge of forestry, that the feds have very little to do with it. Let's back up and say in 1867 we weren't talking about climate change, we weren't talking about indigenous rights. Yes, for, forests, in terms of your annual allowable cut, your logging allowances, that's clearly provincial. But the federal government has a much bigger role here for biodiversity protection, for reconciliation, and for climate action. So let's take off our 1867 blinkers and figure out how we get everybody in the same canoe.